All right. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, yet another edition of the Friday morning webinar on the Farm Program Decision. This is Jonathan Coppas. Gary Schnitke is here as well, and Nick Paulson. All right. Well, we uh, we'll get started. Uh, thank everybody for tuning in again this morning. Uh, we'll go through the Farm Program Decision. As we said a minute ago, if you've got questions, type them in. Uh, they'll come up on the screen here in front of us, and we'll answer them as we go. Uh, also, if you've got a specific county or crop you'd like us to run some analysis on or look at in the web tools, um, we are happy to take suggestions and uh, we'll do that as we go. As we said, we're going to do some polling. So we'll kick off uh, right away with the first poll. Have you done your base acre reallocation and yield updating yet? Yes or no? And by that we mean, have you done the paperwork? Have you gone into FSA and signed it up? Have you have you, have you done it? Are you one of those that met the original deadline, not the extended deadline, to, to deal with base acres? So, and just a little background here. Originally, that was uh, due February 27th. Now you'll have to March 31. We heard in a number of counties that there was a big line on February 27th, and that immediately went down slowed down a little bit after the deadline was what what was was passed so here's your responses yes 77 percent all right that's good the vast vast majority have taken care of that uh, that part of it um, if good you, to know if you haven't if you haven't we have have a uh, some some pretty straightforward recommendations base acre reallocation you're going to give be given two choices a or b keep the current or reallocate you can't influence either one total base <coughs> acres are the same in either case it's just which crops they're in and we would again suggest suggest taking the allocation with the acres in the most crop that is expected to pay the most that's corn at the top next would be wheat followed by soybeans. So if you have an uh, allocation with more corn than another one, that's probably the one you should select. Yield updating, pick the highest yield. Yeah, and again, we encourage you to get into your FSA office and uh, get that decision covered. Um, deadline's March 31st. And the paperwork is actually fairly, fairly, fair, fairly, fairly painless to do that. So. I'm not getting a response out of the. Oh, you got to click up here. Oh, there's a keyword. Oops. Go back. It looks like we got one more uh, polling question. Hey, what program crops do you have? And click all those that 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 you have. So, just just out of curiosity, what are what are um, what are um, what our numbers look like, so that we can sort of focus here a little bit and see where we're where who's in our audience. And we'll show this poll again, just to just to give you a, give you a feel for it. So if you continue to vote here, we appreciate you doing that. We're going to show you show you the results. As we've said before, if you're looking at pay, expected payments, and again, we're looking from 2014 to 2018. Could we be wrong in our ranking here? Yes. I mean, it really does depend on what prices and yields do over that time period. But here, we would expect corn, a base acre of corn, to pay more than a base acre of wheat, and which will pay more than a base acre of soybeans. Grain sorghum for the 6% of you who are in the southern Illinois, likely, or some other place, grain sorghum is between uh, corn and corn and corn and yeah. wheat. And it's got a, a higher reference price um, than corn does, and so it's it's going to have some some value in that respect for for a lower price scenario. Looks like from our polling results, about 88% are corn and soybeans, uh, just a little under half in wheat. So again, we appreciate everybody taking the quick poll. You want to put me back on there? You're you're there. All right. As usual, um, particularly uh, as we close out our effort here um, in the next week or so, a couple weeks, we want to thank again all those uh, members of our outreach coalition. You see them on the screen in front of you. Appreciate all the work they've put into uh, this, this process and this effort. So 
Uh, as usual, we want to just remind everybody of the resources as part of that, that effort, part of that uh, USDA cooperative agreement. Um, we've got the Farm Bill Toolbox, which you can just find by searching on, uh, on any search engine for Farm Bill Toolbox, or you've got the website there. Uh, that's where we've got our seven steps for the decision process. Um, if, you haven't, uh, if you haven't gone through those yet, we would encourage you to do so. And of course, any webinars, calculators, articles, and, and pretty much everything we've got for this Farm Bill Farm Program decision can be found there, including the, uh, the online calculators we're going to show today. And the deadlines. We're all lined up on March 31st. Counting down. And one, one other thing about those deadlines, as we see in the red box at the right, they, they're made on FSA farm basis. So if you have more than one FSA farm basis, you can make different decisions on each farm. Once March 31 passes, they cannot be changed. So this is the irrevocable part of it. Once that, that deadline passes, they will not be able to change. The other thing is, is for the program choice decision, you really do need to sign up, particularly if you're in a county where there's going to be some payments, because if you fail to sign up, you will be defaulted in PLC, which may or may not be bad for you, but what will be bad is that you will forfeit all 2014 payments. Yeah. So, um, so you really should not ignore this decision because there could be money on the line that you would go would 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 not get if you do not make the sign up by the March 31 deadline. Yeah, absolutely. There, there could be some financial pain involved in uh, in missing that deadline. So March 31st, uh, just a couple weeks away. So if you haven't uh, made an appointment to get into FSA or haven't been into FSA, we encourage you to do so as and soon as possible. Maybe just even to to clarify that a, a bit more that even if you want PLC, even if that's the program you intend to enroll in. You still should go in and make that election. Um, you, you will be defaulted in it, but as Gary pointed out, if, if you don't officially go in and sign up by March 31st, even if PLC is what you want, you will forfeit any 2014 payments. So, and uh, just some program details. Uh, we're, we won't bela uh, belabor these, considering uh, the the amount that's out there. But just reminding everybody that our counties are our county-based revenue program using those average county yields. The uh, five year Olympic averages dropping highs and lows set at 86 percent maximum of 10 percent you know we've gotten some questions on this or I, I've gotten some questions about this 10 percent maximum and how it works and so you're taking 10 percent of that benchmark that five-year Olympic average price times a five-year Olympic average yield and that's the most per acre the program can pay and then that's a paid out on on the 85 percent of your base acre so there's been some confusion on how the 10 percent works with the 85% of base acres and that what you do is you, that's that's the process you're going to get to the benchmark 10% of that is the maximum payment per acre then it's made on 85% of the base yeah and just to, just to give you a little feel for that again let's say and I'm just going to take a uh, an example here corn let's say you have a benchmark revenue of $800 per acre the most art county is going to pay is 10% of that benchmark or revenue or eighty dollars an acre right. Right. and so soybeans will have a lower maximum payment than corn because it has lower revenue and and wheat will be um, sort of in between between there again our county one of the choices you're going to make and you can and here's our here's our next choice the other program then is price loss coverage or PLC. Uh, this one's kind of standard issue uh, target price, reference price program. Um, you've seen it from 2002 and 2008 farm bills. The difference here, we've we've seen some increase in the in the prices. They're now called reference prices. Those prices don't change. You see corn 370, soybeans 840, and wheat 550. They'll remain those prices through the life of the farm bill. They're set in statute. Those of you that add grain sorghum, it's 395 a bushel for grain sorghum. So a little bit higher in corn. And then the way it pays out is whenever the market year average price, and, and we're using that same market year average price for all the programs, but if you're below, if that market year average is below the reference, you trigger a payment on the difference, and then that payment's made using that payment yield, which you could have updated, and then uh, um, paid again out on 85% of the crop's base. So let's give an example for 2014, and again, these programs run from 2014 to 2018, so when you sign up, you're going to be making a, a choice for the years 2014 through 2018, and maybe even a little bit longer if they extend the farm bill. 
Market year average price for corn. Right now, WASD, the midpoint of what USDA is predicting is 370. So there would not be a PLC payment for 2014 on corn. If we had a 365 price for corn, market year average price, we would have a five cent payment. They would multiply that time your program yields, which again is what you chose up in the first decision times 0.85. Soybeans is 840. We'll go through this again, but right now it looks like the market year average price for, for soybeans is going to be closer to 10. No PLC payment in 2014. Wheat is near six dollars. No payment for 2014. Right. Yeah, you gotta be you have to be below the reference price of that national market year average price in order to get a, a payment triggered on PLC. And then finally the ARC individual program. Um, Another version of the revenue program, uh, this time it's going to work instead of using county average yields, you're going to use the actual yields on your farm, but you're going to use all the program crops. So every program crop with base is going to get added together. It's going to be weighted by the actual planted acres, so uh, there's a weighting involved when you add those together. That'll set the benchmark. You're again at 86% and the same 10% maximum. The big, big deal or big issue with ARC individual besides some of the complexity and the, the multi-crop situation is that it, uh, where ARC County and PLC pay on 85 percent of the crop base, ARC individual pays on 65 percent of the whole farm base. Uh, and there are certainly some situations, um, and we'll go maybe through this a little bit more, we've gotten questions about ARC individual and where it works or why, uh, why some would want to consider it. I and mean, we typically think of what kind of unique circumstances that FSA farm have that makes up that 20% differential on the base? Because you've got an 85% on the Art County versus 65% here. And typically that, when you're looking at it, you're growing one crop on that FSA farm because when you have two crops, they're averaging them together. So averaging crops together, it makes it much harder to get payments. And you're looking for a crop that has very variable yields. If you're thinking of a place, think of bottom ground in a floodplain, usually very good yields, um, but when it gets hit, it gets hit hard. That's the type of situation where this, this program will, will work. The other uh, situation we've heard, we've heard some examples and discussion about might be in a county where either the county's big enough with enough variability across the county or from end to end. Um, where where the, some farms in that county are, are just completely not represented by how the county moves. And so uh, we, we typically think, and most examples we've heard are places like Montana, where you might have a, a really large county and most of all of it's, you know, you've got pretty much all wheat base in that farm. And you're just not going to, you're going to, your farm's going to run on a different, a different uh, yield risk situation in the county. So that would be another case to think about it. But again, you want to, Kind of keep in mind how do you how does your farm uh, operate in order to get that that difference on the base the sixty five percent versus eighty five percent base. Now here's Next question. question. All right, so <laughs> you could be sitting here listening to this and have already made your program choice forms. So we're asking you: Have you made that program choice, the PLC Arc County Arc IC choice for each one of your FSA farms? If you made it, you could still change it. Actually, you can change. If you've signed up your farms already even on your base acre and yields, you could change the choice. You have that, that choice. So we're, we're trying to figure out here if, you, if you're, you are, you're here today, if you made that choice, trying to figure out if it's the right one or if you've waited. And, we're, and um, again, um, if you've done the base acre and yield updating, which we've heard was pretty painless. Or, um, I shouldn't quite say it that way. FSA has done an admirable job of making yeah. this 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 pop, this um, um, procedure as as efficient as they can. Um, program choice, the paperwork is going to be much easier than for the other two choices. Yeah, and I think uh, we got about eighty percent of you that still haven't made the decision. And I think uh, from everything we've heard, we echo what Gary just said that. Um, a big, uh, a big um, appreciation to FSA for all the work they've done on this and the, the hard work at the uh, at the county level, especially to to deal with what is not what is not a simple uh, set of program choices and paperwork and other things. And so, 
when you do go in, uh, for that 80, 79% of you that haven't yet, um, thank them for their uh, for their hard work and be patient if there's lines and and some struggle to uh, to work through it. But they've done quite a bit of, of work thus far. The other thing about the program choice is it's the person that has a share in the crop that will make the decision. So if you're if you're a landlord and you have a cash rent farmer, the cash rent farmer will be making the decision. If you're the farmer and it's a cash rent situation, the cash rent will person will be making that decision. If it's a share rent, you both have to be in agreement on the decision and, and those those decisions can't split. So we're not going to talk a lot about crop insurance in this discussion, but Nick, we've got one program that needs to factor into the, or one crop insurance policy needs to factor into your program decision, uh, the old supplemental coverage. Right, so the, the, the new SCO program, the supplemental coverage option, um, Again, hopefully uh, you guys have have all uh, have all heard a little bit about this already. But um, this is a crop insurance program, so first want to emphasize that. So this is something you'd be working with your your crop insurance agent on to to get more information about or to purchase. Uh, it's not something that that you're going to be doing at the FSA office. Uh, however, as Jonathan uh, pointed out, we we do include it here because the decision you make by that 31st deadline on your program. Uh, at the FSA office could impact what acres um, would be eligible for this additional supplemental coverage and specifically if you enroll anything in either one of the ARC programs um, that's going to limit um, your eligibility to, to purchase SCO. So if you've got a commodity on a farm uh, enrolled in ARC County, um, any acreage you plant on that FSA farm uh, to that crop in any given year will, will not be eligible for SCO coverage. And if you enroll a farm in ARC individual, um, all the planted acreage on that farm, uh, regardless of the crops, uh, none of that acreage would be eligible for SCO. So SCO is only available if you got ground that's that's not in a program, uh, it's not part of, uh, not enrolled in PLC or either one of the ARC programs, or uh, any any farm or commodities there are enrolled in, in PLC. Um, SCO is a, is a new crop insurance program this year, so 2015 is the first crop year it's been available. For, for those of you, quite a few of you had wheat base. If you're producing any wheat, you would have already had the opportunity to buy SCO coverage on your wheat uh, back in the fall. Uh, in terms of uh, the spring planted crops, uh, again, the majority of you have corn and, corn and bean base and are probably still planting corn and soybeans. If you're in Illinois, um, Every county in Illinois is, has got SCO available for corn and soybeans this year, so uh, this is something you could purchase by that March 15th uh, close, sales closing date for crop insurance. A uh, couple key things with SCO is it, is it is a program that's going to supplement what you're already buying uh, for crop insurance, so you are required to buy an underlying individual policy, and it's got to be one of the combo products, so you do need to purchase uh, either revenue protection, revenue protection with the harvest price exclusion, or yield protection to uh, to be able to add SCO uh, to that. Um, and then SCO itself is actually a county triggered product, and and what it does is it covers a a portion of your uh, of your insurance deductible. So um, it's going to kind of supplement uh, the coverage on that individual program. Uh, again, the key thing to understand though is that you need to there needs to be a loss at the county level. So county revenue has to be below expected or county yield has to be below expected to, uh, to trigger a payment on that SCO policy. Um, again, it is a crop insurance program, so there will be a subsidy associated with it. Um, and those subsidies will, or there will be a premium associated with it. Uh, that premium will be subsidized at a rate of 65%. And it seems to me, so the, the two big keys on the SCO portion of this decision are really come down to that county trigger and then just where you buy up your underlying policy. Because if you're already buying at 85%, then SCO is a pretty a, a pretty small level of protection on top of an 85% policy. Uh, if you're in a wheat situation where you can only get 75, it, it may it may alter the equation a bit in that way. But it's that county trigger in that underlying policy. Yep, and the, the trigger on SCO is fixed at 86%, and it goes down to whatever your individual plan coverage level is. So example you see on the screen is you know if you're buying 75 percent RP um, SCO is going to cover county revenue from 86 percent down to 75 percent 
If you're buying 85% RP, it's only going to add an additional 1% protection there from 86 to 85. So yeah, if you're already buying buying up to 85%, 80% SCO doesn't add a whole lot. Um, other strategies we've heard people talk about is because of the relatively high subsidy on SCO, there will be some situations where you can save some premium dollars by, uh, so let's say you're already, historically you've, you've bought high individual coverage, 85% RP uh, or something like that. You could maybe save a, a few dollars in premium per acre by reducing that individual coverage level and then adding SCO on top of it. However, you know, we've, uh, we've kind of been cautioning people against uh, those types of strategies because you are trading uh, individual coverage for area coverage, which is not going to provide you as, as, a, as good a risk management. Um, you know, and in, in most cases we've looked at, we're only talking about a, a savings of maybe one or two dollars per acre in premium. There are some exceptions to that. Um, and Gary, maybe you, I don't know if those are kind of regional. You want to say anything about those, but in most cases, you're not going to save a whole lot in premium, and, and you are going to give up a lot in risk protection. Yeah, there are a couple areas where that where where you could see more savings using using SCO. A prime example of that is Saline County, Illinois, and it appears it, it isn't necessarily geographically um, um, related. It seems to be more related to the t the just the variability of ground in the county and uh, if you go into Saline County they have some very very good ground and some not so good ground and the, and, and 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 there 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 are risks there and it happens to also be an area where one area counters the other area so there's bottom ground and then there's hills and and, and so in those areas SCO may have lower lower cost obviously though it's going to not all. It's going to protect against the county level, which is which is which is not the same as the farm level. Yeah, and always keeping that in mind that you're you're trading off for that county level trigger. So, I guess our summary points are kind of the 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 three big things for your for your decision between Art County and PLC, uh, which is what we're focusing on here. Uh, price expectations probably the biggest driver. Uh, where you think prices are going to be the next five years, and and again, I we we constantly talk about this not being an exercise in a new uh, being a price forecaster or, or trying to beat the market or guess where the market's going to be. It's really that that range of prices. Where do you think prices are likely to stay in general? Are they, are they going to be above that 370? Are they going to be below that 370 on corn? Uh, so where do you think prices are going to go? Yields are going to be important. We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we show uh, what we're seeing in 2014. Uh, do you want that yield protection in one of the revenue programs? And the trade-off being a high county yield in some places like we saw this year could uh, could really impact your, your our county payment. So you got to balance those out. And then finally, the SCO factor. Uh, how does that add up or how does that factor into your into your decision um, when you can couple that with PLC? So we got our next polling question. All right, so here, we're going to now show you, we're moving into Art County versus PLC comparisons, and as Jonathan said, it does depend on your price expectations. Now we're just uh, asking you what you think prices are going to average over the next several years, and we won't hold you to this. We're not going <laughs> to. We're not going to bet our, our bet our lives on the. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, none uh, of us are going to put money on the line uh, with this forecast, right? So, but we're just just sort of sort of curious where you are at and maybe this will also see see where other other people are at as well so this is in a in just a little bit more background here so if if um, it is this is an average over the next five years and obviously we're going to be above it and we're going to be below it and uh, and um, we'll see where we're at right your polling results are almost in and here they are oh, look at that five percent you believe less than three, three bucks in, in a uh, bushel 16 percent three to 330 47 percent 330 to 370 370 and over to some four 26 percent and over five or over four dollars five percent of you so that'll 
you you'll you'll see why we're asking that here here in a minute. One more poll before we do this. Now you do it for soybeans. So tell us where you think soybeans are going to be over the next five years. And as Gary said, as we continue the discussion, we kind of pick these price ranges for a reason. So if you can kind of remember the price range you selected in these polls, it might uh, might help. Uh, relate that to what we're going to talk about here in terms of our county versus PLC. And again, price expectations, um, we can tell you what we think and everybody <laughs> can tell you what they think and we're going to give you different expectations of what people think and there's only one set that matters and we'll know that in 2019. So, um, appreciate you taking your poll and you're getting in there, you're pretty close. We're going to show you the results now. Um, it's quite a, a bulk of everybody between eight and nine dollars on soybeans. Eight and nine dollars. Fifty-eight percent of you are eight and nine dollars. Twenty percent, twenty-one percent, nine to ten, and twenty-one percent from seven to eight. That's a uh, symmetric distribution. <laughs> yeah. Get some statistics in here this morning. So yeah. So too, too early for statistics, <laughs> right? Well, thank you again for taking the polls. I just kind of. Like as we go through this, Nick made a good point. We, we've got those up there for a reason, and we'll, we'll show you kind of how, how that factors into the decision making. So here we look at prices, and uh, in the web tool, the APAS web tool we'll show you online, here are the prices that are being used. Uh, the one thing, uh, that maybe the first thing we'll point out is the green line, which we've added a new price series to the APAS tool. It's a different type of price series than the others. Uh, most of you may remember that CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, USDA, and FAPRI down at the University of Missouri, they all put out um, market year average forecasted prices for the next five years. USDA and CBO do this uh, quite a bit for uh, purposes of trying to figure out what programs are going to cost and, and estimated expenditures and whatnot, and FAPRI you know, does a lot of that work as well. So, what we've added is a futures hybrid, um, and Gary, maybe talk a little bit about what the what the futures hybrid price is on the APAS tool. So the futures hybrid there is the green line and just a little bit background on the slide 2014, 2015, 2016 we're showing price projections for each one of those years so these are the years that matter here these are based on what futures prices are saying right now that the that prices will look like in 2015, 2016, 2017. And they're sort of in the above $4, close to four four twenty five. dollars um, And again, that's a futures market expectation of what prices will be in future. Here, just to give you a feel, FAPRE, which is out of University of Minis or Missouri, Sorry, Fabry. Sorry for both the institutions there. Uh, um, they're closer to four dollars. So when they're make projecting out, they're closer to four dollars. This red line is the reference price, three seventy. CBO is more pessimistic. They're below it, and then they go above it. And USDA, for whatever reason, is much more pessimistic than the rest of them. Yeah, and USDA has consistently been that lowest price range. Um, throughout this, and then we, we're not really certain why, but uh, we've gotten that question quite a bit as well. And I, you know, Gary, you made the point. The big key is that red line. If you're not below in this program decision, right, is is not so much will we be at 425 in 2016, but will we be above or below that reference price? Uh, and then how far, if you're below the reference price, how far below uh, in order to make the program decision for the next five years. So again, coming back, you gave us some price expectations over the next five years. You have to be below 370 before you get any sort of PLC payments. Our county will pay at higher prices than that, primarily because this blue line shows the base or the benchmark price used for our county and we'll explain it more. In it here in a minute, but it's above that 370 reference price. Yeah, that's that five year Olympic moving average price. And the other key thing you see in this is that the reference price doesn't change, it's 370 every year, but that benchmark price in Art County 
given lower prices, every year it's going to recalculate taking in the, those lower prices and it's going to, uh, the price uh, protection component out of the price assistance side of that's going to come down with, with a lower price. And the only thing, maybe to, just to reemphasize this, the only thing we know on this chart with any certainty is where that blue five-year Olympic average starts. We know that that's 529 for 2014. We don't know what that's going to be in the future, but if we kind of see prices uh, at the lower levels that are, are projected out here, you know, in the in the 350 to 425 range, which is what all these forecasts are in, we're going to see that Olympic average come down uh, over the next five years, and, and this is kind of the path we'd expect based on what we think we know right now. Um, and then even for 2014, we don't know for sure what that final uh, market year average price is. Like Gary said, USDA's latest um, projection here in March uh, came out and the, the midpoint of the range that they're looking at is 370. Still could come in a little bit above that or a little bit below that, but um, we don't even know what that final 2014 market year average price will be, let alone 15, 16, 17, or 18. And the other maybe an added point to that is where nobody's going to know what that final market year average price is before the decision gets made um, in a couple of weeks. So, yep. so that 370 projection, that's the last piece of information we're going to get on prices yeah. um, before, uh, before that 31st deadline. And actually, as sitting here today, we, we know there's nothing that really we're going to know between now and March 31 that's going to make this, this decision any more clear. Yeah. So, um, and they say, yep, yeah, we're, we're kind of at the, we're at the decision point. We don't, yeah. We're not going to get anything really new at this point, even on the yield side. We've got NAS yields. We're going to show those in a minute. Um, so you, you've got as best of an estimate now as you're going to have for the deadline. Um, just another price look here at soybeans and kind of, um, Again, we've got a futures hybrid pulling off Chicago Board of Trade prices. Just, again, just some another reference point to kind of get a sense of what else is being said about prices uh, other than the CBO, USDA, and FAPRI. And you can go on the APAS tool and see those updated prices. Uh, that, that futures gets updated every week based on the closing prices on Friday. Uh, that 840 reference price there, Gary, you're highlighting, that's the key for soybeans. 840. And and it's sort of interesting, unlike corn, most of our projections are above it. Only one that has a price below it is CBO in 2015. Um, this sort of shades us more to our county on, on soybeans because most people are expecting prices above 840. And as you can see, as you'll see here in a minute when we get into the tool, even if we have prices below 840, um, our county will likely make higher payments than PLC for some prices below that. Yep. And then we, uh, it's certainly a different look. Um, everything for 2014 and, and right now, I think Gary said, it, it's pretty clear that the wheat price, the market average price, which is going to end, it won't end in time for the 31st decision, but it's going to um, end what, in June yeah. or May, end of May. May. So we're going to know that in, in relative, relatively shorter order than the other ones. But the thing is, with where prices are for wheat now, it, it's nearly impossible to bring that down under the reference price. So it's going to be hard to think about a wheat PLC payment this year. But wheat becomes an example of trying to think over the five years because we see the out-year projections of prices by, the, uh, by almost every one of the forecasters is below, if not well below, that reference price. And so... For those of you with wheat base, uh, contemplating this decision on wheat base, um, yeah, this is probably one of the tougher calls because it's you're going to be uh, you're looking at a lot of forecast numbers out below that reference price, and in which case we typically see PLC um, as a more favorable option for for wheat in many instances, and some of that does go to the SCO potential as well. Well, let's just give them an example of corn, the our county PLC tool now and we'll, we'll cement it a little bit yep all right if you have I'm we're going to run a we're going to run an example here first with McLean County if you have any request for another county oh Champaign County we'll do Champaign County um, um, well, can you talk us through this Nick I have the uh, 218 is the right price of the yield for do do no you do champ all right yeah Okay. I got to look up the Champaign County 
price yield. So a couple things to look at on the screen while, while Gary's grabbing the Champaign uh, County. You, you're going to put in your state county the crop, uh, your payment yield. Remember, you can update that, so maybe push that up to yeah, like so a 165 update on that payment yield. Yeah, so this number here that Gary's changing to 165, again, that would that would be the, the payment yield that you could have updated um, in one of the this first two decisions with the original February 27th deadline. You, again, that's something you still could do, but that's a farm-specific number, uh, and that'll be used to calculate PLC payments if, if the price is below the reference price. What we're doing, what's going on down here now is uh, when you select your state and county and crop, it pulls in the five-year uh, county average yield history that FSA uses. It also pulls in the five-year uh, uh, history of the of the market year average price for corn and that's a national price that won't change if you change the county those are the five prices for for corn in all counties we did get a question about uh, the Olympic average and how that works so uh, on the yield side again these are the five yields that matter for 2014 167 is the Olympic average of those the way that's calculated is they drop the low and they drop the high so in this case we'd be dropping the 2009 yield of 190 and the 2012 yield of 123, the average of the remaining three is 167. 529 is the Olympic average of those five prices. We'd be dropping the, the 2009 price and the 2012 price, averaging the other three. Multiply these two values together, that gives you your benchmark revenue. And that's, again, the benchmark, 10% of that is the biggest payment you can get. 86% of the benchmark is the guarantee, so that's where the 760 comes from for Champaign County. What Gary's done here is uh, entered in our best estimate of what that final county county yield is. That's what NAS released uh, uh, recently for the for the average <coughs> county yield for corn in Champaign County. The yields that FSA uses for this program could differ uh, from from what what NAS published, um, although. Gary, most of the time in a state like Illinois, they're going to be pretty close within a bushel or two. Yeah, so if, if anything, uh, the FSA yield could be 215 or 214, and this year it's not going to matter. Um, just just not going to matter. Because so, we, yep. so, so we got a big, a big yield in Champaign County this year, as is the case in a lot of, lot, lot of areas in, uh, in, um, uh, in central Illinois. Uh, 370 again. That's the price, the latest price that USDA came out with uh, in terms of expected price for for 2014. Uh, if you multiply those together, that's your actual revenue. And if if those are the final yields and prices we see, uh, there would not be an Arc County payment uh, in in Champaign County in 2014. There also would be no uh, PLC payment in 2014 because that actual price is, is right at that reference price. And let's just give you another, so look, you know, it could be that the, the market year average price this year will turn out to be 365. Yeah, there is, it still could move from that 370. We don't, we won't know that till August 31st. In that case, there'd be a $7 PLC payment. And it's, it's actually kind of hard right now to see for Champaign County or for that matter, any place in the, in the country where people, PLC payments are going to be over ten dollars an acre for corn. For corn, so um, it's yeah. If you're in Champaign County, you're probably not going to get an Arc County payment if you chose it. You're probably going to not going to get a PLC payment for corn, although it could be a small one. Um, so, and and you're not going to get a soybean or wheat payment either. So um, you won't be likely getting large twenty. 14 payments. Um, again, going down here, here's your price expectations. So we, we're, we're doing this, uh, doing this, we, we project out for all four year or till 2018. Right now we have prices, let me just make them all $4. If you believe $4 prices will happen, you won't get any PLC payments, you, except for the for potentially for the first year, but you can see here, Arc County would make a big payment next year with 171 bushel yield. If that happens to be higher, that could go away, but then you might push it to the next year. So, just just shows you, if we have four dollar prices, you could be getting some some bigger payments on Arc County. 
this goes down to 350, our county would make larger payments in 2015 and 2016, again, because of our benchmark price and that being higher. So you can see here we would have Art County three a seventy-five dollar payment, seventy dollar payment. Then PLC would be making payments each year, but twenty-eight dollars per year. And there you see that how that Olympic average is working. The Olympic average price is working over time because you front load the payments out of the Art County, and then as the price comes down, you see that benchmark that price come down. Benchmark drop with uh, with the move in the market. Uh, the other thing, uh, you know, maybe to talk about here just you know Gary pointed out if you change the yield obviously that affects our county uh, payments uh, some of these future yields we've got in here are, I guess what we would call expected or trend yields the yield we'd expect in that area uh, if we had kind of a normal weather year um, um, so you know you, you if you got a you know you could put different yield numbers in there but I think you know trend estimates are probably the best way to look at that in the future especially on the yield side uh, prices, who knows? But but yields, I think you just got to assume we're going to have kind of regular weather years. I don't I don't think anybody can predict with any 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 certainty at all. You know whether we're going to see a drought in the next three or four years, or when that's going to happen, or if we're going to have some you know, heavy rain or anything like that. So so the other thing, let's just do put three thirty in here. So somewhere in the 330 to 340 range, there's a break-even point where um, payments are roughly equal between PLC and PLC and Art County. It's closer to 340 for uh, Champaign County, and that that happened because of there's being no payment in right. for Art County in in 24. 2014. Yeah, by zeroing that out, you change that overall average. So somewhere, if you believe prices are going to average above 330, 340, you should be in Art County, otherwise in PLC, um, which plays into our maps here. So we've done this exercise for 2014 for all corn counties in the state, or excuse me, in the nation. And here is what it looks like. Oops. Here is 2014 estimated Art County payment. So we did essentially this. What we did, with what we just did for each county in the nation. Um, we used a 365 price, and whatever NAS indicated the yields would be. Here you'll see. And this is for 2014. Blue numbers are or blue counties are projected to receive zero payments. You can see there that that's a large number of counties in central and southern Illinois, Missouri, southern Iowa, Kansas, pretty much where high yields were, were, were at. If you go outside that area, Iowa, northern Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Minnesota, Wisconsin, um, we're looking at over in many of those counties over sixty dollar payments in twenty fourteen, and um, for our county, for our, for county. our county. So this is our county payments. Again, um, modest payments for twenty for our for PLC in twenty fourteen. And this is all due to the yield situation, the county yields in that in the twenty fourteen crop year, which Gary, you've also mapped here. And you can just you can see the dark blue and compare it on this one to the light blue there, and where you've got a high yield above that trend, that's that's lowering or knocking out the R County payment in fourteen. So um, it it does depend depend where you're at whether you're you're going to get get payments this year, and again, Champaign County, Illinois, and pretty much any place in Central Illinois, and and a lot of places in Southern Illinois. For corn, you shouldn't be expecting large payments. If you happen to be in the northern part of the state, northern Illinois, you're going to max out. And if you're in some other parts of the corn belt, you you might be maxing out as well. 
and we'll just to kind of make that even more stark of a comparison, we'll look just at, at two counties in Illinois, McLean County, where we've got that high 217, 218 bushel per acre yield. Same uh, 365 market year average price, both of them using the same 165 bushel per acre program yield compared to DeKalb County where your Nass County yield was about 192. And there we're looking at a $79 payment maxing out. And that's all yields. That, that incredibly high yield here in central Illinois is just driving up the revenue number for this year. Um, and and that's that's what that's what we see come out of it. So again, just make make sure we highlight just kind of how the programs work and set the expectations for what uh, what may came out what may come out of this at the end of the day. Uh, given that we still don't know what market year average price is going to be, but we won't know that anyway before March 31st. Yep, the mar the market year average price for both corn and soybeans runs from September through August. So the we'll actually know the uh, market year average price for 2014 in late September of 2015, so. Right, and then just kind of carrying out your analysis a little bit more, you've you've run the, uh, using the trend yield and, and basic uh, uh, price comparison out of the APAS tool, which we can show here in a second, um, and you just see kind of the average payments over that 15 to 18 time frame, where we'd expect our county, given more normal circumstances than the kind of yield situation we had this year, uh, where it would pay out on corn. Soybeans, this is your 2014 analysis for soybean payments? Soybean payments, you have to be in select counties to be to re be receiving soybean payments. You can see there though some of those are in Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Nebraska. There's a couple counties where there's a modest payment in Illinois. So uh, Minnesota's hit the lottery again. Is your 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 farm there? Well, again, you you keep talking about hitting the lottery in Minnesota. <laughs> I, I think if you gave them the choice between 220 bushel corn and an Ark County payment, they may take the bushels. But uh, but yeah, I guess they hit the Ark Ark County lottery in in the in, in the place that I grew up this year. And that's a and at that 1020 mark, your average. That's all a yield problem. So they they have just they had a yield uh, trigger. It's also a reminder that the Ark County program isn't just on price that yields can work in your you know that yields can trigger or they can uh, they can throw you out of a payment as well so always want to keep in mind um, that aspect of so it. So that's 2014 payments for for Art County the all if you signed up for PLC for Art County or for soybeans zero. You're not even close so. you're, you're almost two bucks away from the reference price Wheat uh, for 2014, um, that 550 reference price again a mark year average price at six bucks is the expected, and uh, we we it takes some pretty catastrophic situation to get below the, the reference price at this point on wheat, so we wouldn't expect much in the way of PLC payments. Here's where you might see some Mark County payments, again uh, yield based uh, situations where they, we've got a county yield that brings it into uh, a lower revenue situation. You can see there that there's going to be ARC County payments in Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, as well as Washington and Oregon. They've had some poorer yields in those areas, and that's why there are payments in those areas. Actually, for them, for those areas, the wheat ARC County PLC choice is going to be tough because you're expecting some pretty good payments in 2014, but longer run expectations so yeah those if those price expectations that CBO and USDA and FAPRI are looking at it probably throws that back into a different situation on wheat and then Gary we've talked a lot about this and, and this is your break point price or your break even this is where if you start with the assumption based on what prices and the way the programs look you kind of look it looks favorable for our county on these for base corn base soybean bait and base and wheat base uh, given the reference price, the five-year Olympic moving averages, but at some point that changes and it becomes more PLC becomes more equal to or more valuable over the five-year average than than our county for those crops. And in general, we'd think of about 330 across the country for corn base and 780 for wheat, or excuse me, 780 for soybean base. You got to be below that before the uh, the numbers change and make make PLC look more attractive than our county. And then 550 for wheat. So another poll. Another poll. Make sure everybody's awake out there. Make sure everybody's awake out there. Um, 
Just a quick poll. Which way are you leaning? Art County PLC. So the energy of corn base, which way are you leaning for corn base? Yep, and again, your price expectations should should matter in that. And if you do believe that the, the prices are three dollars and below, um, PLC would be the choice actually in that case. And if you're somewhere above that, something else. And uh I guess we didn't include Arc Individual here. We got that coming up. We got that coming up. Don't worry. We got I guess. I guess at this point, if you are thinking Arc Individual, you you could you could make the Arc choice here. Um, Actually, so here's here's the thing about Arc Individual. Once you choose Arc Individual, you can't do it for crop. Yeah. Right. So yeah, we couldn't. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to ask about Arc Individual for a specific commodity. Yeah, you're all in on Arc Touché. Individual. If you take it, if you take it. Here's but, what your guys are saying. 94% said Art County, 6% said PLC. So, well, thank, thank you for taking the, the uh, poll. And we got one more here. Just, just, just soybeans. What about soybeans? I think those results on corn are pretty reflective of where the audience's price expectations were. Maybe would have expected to see a little bit higher PLC numbers. Quite a few of you actually thought. Corn prices might be in that 330 or lower range, but so the other thing that you may we've heard some people consider is mixing their farms, putting some in Art County, some in PLC for corn. If you're going to do that, pick the farms with the highest program yields for PLC because PLC is going to make higher payments for for farms with with uh, with uh, PLC for for. Um, PL, with higher PLC yields. I'm sorry. Here's what you said for soybeans: 82% Art County, 18% PLC. So here's Art County, our Art individual. I want to describe it, Nick. You're the expert. <laughs> I don't know why I'm, I get to be the expert on the, the ones you guys don't want to talk about. Um, so. Again, uh, we mentioned this Art individual program earlier. We we talked about there being some challenges. We we by no means want to completely disregard this or, or, or push people away from it, but you know I think what, what Jonathan and Gary were talking about earlier, it, it, it is a program that probably requires some unique circumstances for it to be the, the program that, that works for you. Um, the, the big challenge here is, is the fact that the payment rate is, is so much lower than the other two program options, so you're looking at a program that if payments are triggered, again, uh, you still got to have revenue fall below the, the benchmark here for this ARC individual program to trigger a payment. If that happens, you're only going to get a payment on 65% of your base acres versus 85% if a, if a payment's triggered um, in the other two choices, ARC County or PLC. So there's got to be something going on on, on, your, on a farm uh, to, to make up for that you know, significantly lower payment rate. And we talked about you know, cases where that may, that, that may be true. Maybe the county just doesn't represent you very well. Again, I think this program uh, was included as a choice in this farm bill. Uh, four farms out west. Um, you know, Jonathan mentioned Montana, where you got big counties. The county average maybe doesn't represent any individual farm very well, um, and, and those would be cases where our individual might be might be considered. Gary mentioned the the you know the situation where you're planning the, to just one crop every year so you don't have the diversification across crops issue. Um, uh, but again, it, it takes some, some pretty unique circumstances, uh, uh, we think, for, for this program to be the, the, the one to choose. Yeah, and I think the other thing to highlight, because we've heard this from a couple, uh, couple of folks that, that may want to add this into the decision, and I think and Nick said it exactly right, we don't want to discourage anybody. In fact, we encourage you to at least look at this program on your farm to see how it, how it works. But another situation that, that comes up for some farmers is where you may be growing specialty crops. In the past, you've been prohibited from growing specialty crops, fruits and vegetables on your base acres. Uh, that prohibition has been modified or revised. And basically what happens now is because uh, if you, you, know, you pay on 85% of your base for our county or PLC, that means there's 15% of that base acres that's not receiving a payment. And so... Uh, to avoid any cross subsidy for specialty crops, what what happens then is you have basically 15% of your base that you can plant specialty crops on and not have it impact your payments. If you go above that, 
then it's going to lower your payment rate. So if you plan at 20% of your base, then your payment rate would be 80%. So one place where ARC Individual begins to make some real sense is if you're looking to put specialty crops out. Uh, we think pumpkins here in central Illinois, uh, over around Peoria, tomatoes uh, up through Indiana and back home uh, in, in western Ohio, sweet uh, you, corn, and sweet corn in southern Minnesota. In that case, you actually have more f uh, flexible acres, if you will, because of the 65% of the total base, you could plant up to 35% of your base into that specialty crop and not reduce your payment any further. So that's kind of another one of those unique circumstances where if you're putting out some fruits and vegetables on the base acres, you got a little bit more flexibility, a little more space to do that under ARC individual because it's not going to pay above it. So just, again, the things you want to consider and think about um, uh, with this program, it is, uh, it's does require some unique circumstances, but it may actually work better for some farms that have those unique circumstances. So um, certainly encourage uh, farmers to take a look at it and make sure they understand what it means for their farm. So here's another poll. Are you considering ARC IC for any one of your FSA farms? Um, again, just 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 let's let's restate the decisions. If you have an FSA farm and choose not to do ARC individual, you can enroll corn and PLC or ARC county and soybeans and the other. You can mix and match programs across farms. Uh, so you could enroll one farm in ARC or corn in one farm in ARC county, another in PLC. If you choose to enroll a farm in ARC IC, all crops are in ARC IC. So it's a whole farm, choose ARC IC, it's all. Other thing is if you enroll two farms in ARC IC, they are averaged together. Yep. So just some of those things. So 5% so of you are thinking about ARC IC, 95% say no. Yep. And again, because it's an FSA farm by FSA farm decision, it's entirely possible to put one FSA farm, so you got one of them that's a separate FSA farm number that's uh, on bottom ground, like Gary said, or that you want to plant specialty crops on it. Um, it's possible to put that one FSA farm in Art County and then you use the rest of the FSA farms on the, on the other programs. But 95% um, of you said you weren't considering ARC individual, and we uh, but we appreciate you taking time to answer the questions and the polls. Um, just a reminder of the online tools, and uh, we've got a we got a couple minutes left here this morning. We're not seeing much in the way of questions. If you got a question, get it in now. Um, otherwise, we'll do a quick tour of the APAS tool, and uh, we showed you the ARC County PLC comparison uh, spreadsheet. Um, actually, maybe while we're doing that, show everybody where we can find that spreadsheet if they want to download the Excel. Uh, to their home computer and and be their own price and yield forecaster for the next five years. Um, yeah, do it. The uh, easiest place to find that and everything else we've got on this is the Farm Bill Toolbox. Um, the fast tool uh, button there will take you to uh, a download button that you then go through to download an Excel program on your computer, uh, and then you can run that that Excel file or that Excel tool that Gary showed. And of course, the other tool we have is the big uh, APAS uh, modeling online calculator and modeling effort. Um, we'll go and uh, yeah, let's go to Minnesota. There we go. We never, we never look at Minnesota. We don't. We there. don't go to Minnesota enough. It's warming up up there, right? We'll just we'll just randomly pick Freeborn County. <laughs> Anybody you know in Freeborn <laughs> County? Uh, and then uh, again, here uh, we're just kind of setting the tool up. Um, again, this is the sample farm section of the APAS tool. So right now we're going to look at Minnesota, Freeborn County. Um, we talked about those different price forecasts. Here's where you can switch between those, and that, and that will affect the results here. Uh, again, that USDA forecast tends to be lower on average, and uh, CBO and FAPRI a little bit higher. And then I think in most, most cases, most crops, we have the, the futures price tends to be a little bit higher uh, in terms of those price forecasts over the five-year period. Um, but once you pick a state and a county, you can go in then and, and take a look at expected program payments. All right, and taking a look again at uh, uh, this county here, which is located in southern Minnesota, this is one of those areas where it looks like our county is going to make some, some big payments. Uh, in 2014, I'm going to look at corn specifically here. Let the uh, chart update. And this is on that sample farm that's that's created a, 
an estimate of a farm about five hundred thousand dollars in revenue scaled and uh, uh, the planted acres or the base acres used used to run the program so this is not a per acre this would be a farm um, maybe show that real quick what kind of acres we're using for this farm on the sample farm. Yeah, so when you go up and, and choose a, a state and a county, it's going to automatically create a sample farm based on the crops that are planted in that area, the data that we have on what farmers actually plant. Uh, here, uh, you know, it's, it's a corn and soybean area in this part of the country, so we got a, a sample farm set up here with about 500 base in, in corn, 400 base acres uh, in soybeans. So if I go back to the uh, uh, expected program payments, you see the the big uh, expected ARC County payment uh, here in 2014. The other thing we do is we put together a, a five-year average, so this would be the expected payment per year across all five years. Um, so big payment in 14, smaller expected annual payments across the five years on, on corn base uh, in this part of Minnesota. And then you see the PLC uh, year one versus the five-year um, uh, average um, across the, the life of the farm bill. Uh, and we also include some, some SCO estimates, if SCO is something you're thinking about adding on here uh, if you enroll in that, in that PLC program. So uh, I think this agrees pretty much with Gary's maps, big, uh, big our county payments. Thanks, um, we can also take a look at it uh, per acre uh, rather than a whole farm payment. Do the five year average. And we'll take a look at expected payments per acre over the five years. So, blue bar is Art County, PLC, corn. We'd expect on, the, on this price series for Art County to make higher payments, soybeans, Art County to make higher payments. Let's just do one other series. The, be, the, the most pessimistic price series is USDA. And they have prices below reference price in all years. For corn. And there, and there it's a push almost between Art County and PLC. And still favors, Art County is favored on soybeans. And again, that's the APAS tool, the Ag Policy Analysis System. Uh, you see it on the screen in front of you. The website is fsa.usapas.com. Uh, you can go to your state and county. And with that, uh, we have come to the end of the hour session. We've got no questions in front of us. And so we will, uh, we will call it a day. We'll be back, uh, was it next Wednesday with uh, our final webinar for this series? Is that right, Wednesday 18th? I don't think so. Is our next webinar? <laughs> Go to the Farm Bill Toolbox. We've got a schedule up there for the next webinar um, that we'll have. Again, and your deadlines are key. March 31st, that one we know, and we're certain of. Keep that, on, keep that in mind, and uh, thanks, for, thanks for tuning in this morning.